What's up guys, it's All Day Anthony and in today's video I am giving you an update and overview of my sim racing setup. Let's go. Right, guys welcome back to another all day Anthony sim racing special where today we are here in my office slash editing room slash sim racing dungeon to give you guys a build update and overview of my racing sim setup so today we're gonna be talking about what I've learned over the last three months since doing a deep dive into the sim world and building a dedicated rig and then we're gonna be going over all the different accessories and upgrades I've made to make this what it is today and then from there, we're going to go out and take this thing for a rip and show you what it's like in action. So I'm really excited for today's video. I hope you guys really dig it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So based on the way everything looks here, you can probably imagine that this hobby isn't cheap. And for the most part, you would be correct. However, there is different levels of which you can get into sim racing that can be very, very affordable or it can be very, 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 very expensive, almost to the point where a hard drug addiction may actually be cheaper in the long run. But keep in mind, when I first got into this hobby a little over three years ago with my initial setup, I want to say I was into that like tops 700 bucks. I had bought used Thrustmaster stuff, I had a foldable cockpit that wasn't very expensive, and I was playing on my old, old TV. And again, I had a ton of fun with that initial setup, but I really didn't know otherwise. And so getting into a setup like this with this whole rig, and all the gear and all the accessories has definitely taken it to the next level. But keep in mind, this is definitely a choice. If you want to get into sim racing, you're obviously going to know that things are going to start adding up. It's going to get expensive. It's just like modifying cars, if not actually worse than modifying cars. Uh, and yeah, it's definitely a choice. So if you want to get into this hobby, just know that a lot of the cost is even just getting in the door with getting something like a PC or even a console, right? A new Xbox, a new PlayStation, whatever it may be and then getting all the gear that follows that. So one thing to keep in mind, one thing to learn, I guess from my experience, is that things do add up, things do get expensive, but it's definitely a choice to get into it. And once you do get into it, I promise you're going to have a ton of fun. Now, another thing I've learned from going down the rabbit hole and building a dedicated sim rig is that I've actually gotten quite a bit faster across the board on all sorts of different sim games. Even on tracks that I've raced for years, such as the Nurburgring slash Nordschleife, shout out to the King Misha, hopefully you're watching this video. You probably aren't, but you know, there's always a chance. But even on tracks like that, I've taken anywhere from five to six seconds off of a lap time, which is crazy to me considering I've played that track for so many freaking years without any improvement. Jumping to the better gear, I started getting a lot faster. Now you're probably thinking, Anthony, the gear, the rig isn't going to make you faster, and you are correct. But because of the experience that the gear and the rig offers, I'm playing for longer, I'm racing for longer, I'm getting more practice, and by virtue of that, I'm getting faster. Now, the last thing I've learned is that a sim racing setup isn't just for racing. Hell, if all I did was just race on this thing all day, every day, chances are I'd be pretty bored of it by now. But this is more of a sim driving rig that offers so many different types of driving. If I want to be a GT racer, cool. An F1 driver, cool. A truck driver, a rally driver, or a drag racer, or hell, even just load up a vibey California coast map, turn on some good tunes, and go for a cruise in a tuner car. I can do that too. What I'm trying to say is that having a sim racing rig offers a lot of variety in all sorts of different types of driving, which makes it even more fun and even more worth it in the long run. All right, so now that you know what I've learned and hopefully inspired you to get into sim racing for yourself, it's time to jump into the main meat and bones of today's video, which is gonna be all of the upgrades and accessories on the build since the initial setup. So we're gonna segment this off by starting with all of the Moza gear first, then we're gonna jump into the GT Omega add-ons, and then all of the other accessories, such as the butt kicker four corner kit, the sound, and even the PC, since I didn't cover that in the first video. So with that said, let's jump into all of the Moza goodies. 
Okay, so Moza Racing has been killing it in the sim racing world, especially given the time that they've been in the industry. They have a lot of different wheel bases, they have some premium wheel options, and a ton of awesome accessories. And fortunately, I've been able to pick up a lot of them. And one of the most eye-catching one of them is going to be the Moza R21 wheelbase. Now, my build initially started with the Moza R12 wheelbase, which means 12 newton meters, 21 meeting 21 newton meters. Now, the R12, I had no complaints with. That was a fantastic wheelbase. I even ran that thing at like 60% and I was plenty happy with it. I wouldn't have made any changes to it at all whatsoever. But Moza saw my first video and reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try out the R21 wheelbase. And of course I was like, yes, please. So they sent this out to me last December and I plugged it in, turned it on for the first time and good God, I I didn't know what to expect, man. Literally, this thing is so powerful that you would question whether or not it's actually fun racing anymore because of how strong it is. I have no idea why you would ever run this thing at 90% feedback, 100% feedback. Hell, even 70% is crazy. So uh, for the 21 here, I've been running this anywhere from 30 to 40% feedback and I actually have a good time playing it. But the biggest thing I noticed with switching to the 21 from the R12 is going to be all of the detail in the tracks. So meaning that when I'm racing and I'm hitting a curb or I'm hitting cracks in the road or just the road texture, the feedback and detail I'm getting to the wheel itself is ridiculously, I mean, ridiculously detailed. It feels really, really good and it feels extremely, extremely accurate. So um, even though I'm not running this at full force, it looks awesome, it feels amazing, and it's pretty under stress. So this thing should last years and years and years. So this right here is Moses' new sequential shifter. I just got this about a week ago and I've been playing with it nonstop. And this thing is a freaking blast. I had no idea how awesome a sequential shifter was until I installed this and now I don't know if I can go back. This thing is extremely addictive and it's extremely high quality. So the thing is made out of full metal here. You have two buttons that you can basically uh, set up for any type of function you want here on the game. You have a neutral leveler here to get you back to neutral. Um, but other than that, everything is just metal. The shift knob is weighted and this thing has such a nice clicky feel. But what's cool about this over the H pattern is that this actually has an adjustment for the amount of resistance it has. So you can have this thing to where it is super clunky or you can have it to where it's relatively loose. And so I kind of have it somewhere in the middle there, uh, but this has been a hundred percent hands down a new favorite of mine. And I like using this actually more than the H pattern now. All right, so now it's time for a wheelie, wheelie good time. Get it? A really good time? No? Anyways, so this right here is Moza's RS V2 steering wheel. So the build initially started out with the ES wheel with the 12 inch mod on it. And I really did like that setup. I thought it was awesome. But I once I saw this thing, I was like, dude, I, I gotta get the RS V2. It just looks way too cool. So this has the full forged carbon face plates on here. It has all these awesome buttons on here that are very tactile and feel just amazing. And then on the back here, you have the carbon shifters that have this really nice tactile and clicky feel. I think it just kind of adds to the experience. So uh, the RSV2 here has all the different color changes that you can do. So you can change all the different button colors, which is really, really cool. Um, I mean, like every single little button here can be changed. So I can change the sequential shift light here to whatever I want. Uh, but what I really like is that this is like a full leather wrap here. Uh, this is kind of like my daily drivers. This is what I have on the, on the rig all the time. So when I have friends or family over who just want to just race or drive, I throw them on with this because it's the most familiar to them uh, and they really, really dig it. So this is kind of like a jack of all trades. It does everything. GT driving, it can be a good F1 driving wheel. Uh, the shifters really, really help, but it can also be a great rally wheel or just a great cruising wheel, especially if you have the H pattern shifter or the sequential. All right, so next up here, we have the KS wheel from Moza. And this wheel, I probably have the most seat time with, uh, mainly for the fact that I went through this massive open wheeler and GT3 uh, racing phase. But uh, this wheel has been awesome. 
awesome. Uh, the one thing I've noticed, the one downside with this wheel is that once I switched to the R21 wheelbase from the R12, that this thing started to develop a creak kind of around these outside edges here. So I've had to go through and tighten up the screws on the back a couple times, uh, but that's about it. All of the buttons are fantastic. All of these switches are great. The LEDs are awesome. And then of course it's got the magnetic shifters on the back, which are not as clicky as the RSV2, uh, cause I think they have some like little muter things on the back, uh, but I still really, really like this wheel as well. So uh, fantastic, but there is another wheel that's better than this one. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This wheel right here, it makes my mouth water. This is the Moza GS V2P wheel. I just got this thing like three weeks ago and I'm pretty much obsessed. So uh, like the RSV2, this is a full forged carbon face plate here. It's got all of the same, just super clicky buttons, full customization there on all of the colors. Uh, this has the new LED shift lights in here. So the previous RSV2 has a sequential shift light there. This is actually LEDs that string the whole way through there, um, but yeah, dude, I don't really know what else to say. I love the perforated grips. I love the carbon clicky shifters here on the back. Um, there's been some other upgrades to this as well. I believe the previous version of their GS wheel um, was actually just a little bit, I think heavier is what it was supposed to be. So they lightened it up a little bit and then obviously made a few other upgrades there with the LEDs. But uh, this right here for GT driving, good God, man, I am like, I'm obsessed. I love that KS wheel. I love that thing, but this thing is just a better wheel. Now the prime light rig itself, which is basically everything you see here, minus the accessories and seat has been pretty awesome. The base plate here, adding this was a huge help in terms of giving my feet some place to rest and also hiding some of the cables. It also just looks really cool, but the rig structurally, this thing is, this thing is pretty rock solid, but I will say that once I switched to the R21 wheelbase here, it had a lot more torque and with a lot more torque comes a lot more rotation. And so I noticed this was kind of wobbling just a little bit, which I don't know is more of an attribute to the weight of the R21 or just the amount of torque itself. But what I ended up doing was adding the GT Omega side support, which is this piece right here. Pretty easy to install, basically just unpacked everything. It kind of plugs in the same way as it did on this side over here. And so this added, I would say a decent amount of rigidity, maybe like another you know, 15%, but it did make a pretty big difference. So this thing really, unless I really jiggle it, it's not going anywhere. So the side support was a big help and just the rest of the rig has been pretty awesome. So I think the only other thing on the rig here that I've changed is adding the keyboard tray. And uh, this thing deserves credit here because uh, it has saved my back for months, dude. I was sitting here and like doing sideways crunches to pick up my keyboard every time I had to make changes on a race. And I'm telling you, I, my abs were getting in good shape, but I was just freaking sore. So um, I just added this again, probably just a couple weeks ago, along with the side support over there. And it's made a massive, massive difference. And so, uh, yeah, I couldn't, I can't believe I went this long without it. All right, so I think that pretty much covers the prime rig itself, but the prime monitor stand, just to quickly touch up on this, this thing's been awesome. It offers a ton of adjustment. If I didn't have this, I would have had to wall mount my TV, uh, but this thing's been great because you can move it up close to you, you can move it far away, which brings me to the next point. A lot of people asked, Anthony, why didn't you build a triple monitor screen setup? Why didn't I do that like other people do? Uh, long story short there, uh, I'm farsighted. My vision isn't great. I have to wear glasses, so up close, my eyes do strain a whole lot. Uh, so as cool as a triple monitor setup would be, this is the most comfortable thing for my eye setup and how I like to race. Uh, but down the road, if I can figure out something with glasses uh, or different lenses or something to make it more comfortable, I'll definitely do that. But uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up the GT Omega stuff. So now it's time to jump into the accessories. So I've added a few different accessories to my rig over the last several months, but this right here is hands down my favorite. This is the butt kicker four corner setup. Now, if you have no idea what a butt kicker is, don't worry because four months ago, I didn't either. A butt kicker is going to be a haptic feedback solution for sim racing. Now, many of you have probably seen online videos where you've seen full motion sim setups where this whole thing will lean up, go down, tilt side to side, and all sorts of different stuff. 
Now, we all know that that's big money. I mean, just looking at that, you know that that costs quite a bit. But what's really cool is that you can have a lot of that same immersion and a lot of that same feel without actually having to do motion. So essentially, these are my amplifiers right here for the butt kicker units. I turn these things on and these are gonna be sending signals to all four corners of these individual butt kicker units. So think of my sim rig here as like a car, right? I have my front right wheel, front left, rear right wheel, and rear left wheel. And so what's awesome is that when I'm racing and I lock up my front wheels, these are going to vibrate like the car has locked up, you know, giving me that actual feel. Let's just say I have a wheel that's slipping on a turn. That might vibrate if I'm slipping on a turn. Let's just say I have a gnarly car that has a crazy shift feel. All these are gonna vibrate and kick me like the transmission is shifting. Now, as far as the setup goes for the Butt Kicker Four Corner Kit, it's pretty straightforward. So unboxing everything, getting everything out, uh, you're basically starting off with these amplifiers here. There is four of them. If you only have one Butt Kicker, you only need one, but once you get to two, you need two, four is four and et cetera. So um, four here, I didn't know what to do with these. So I went and got this rack from Target and I thought this was a pretty good option here. And then these all run individually to their own dedicated butt kicker unit which is pretty cool and then on the back of each amplifier there is a USB that goes into the computer itself I got myself a USB splitter to make things easy uh, but that's pretty much it right so you have your high cutoff frequency you have your volume itself you also have a low cutoff filter as well uh, you're gonna change the volume based on how your rig is and so keep in mind each one of these vibrates so you want to set it up to where you're getting kind of the most vibration in that area. So on the rig here, you can see the dedicated butt kicker mounts. So butt kicker actually sells these as well. So you're gonna put the mount on first. This is pretty easy to do. And then the butt kicker unit slides over that. And then you basically just crank it down. So I obviously have it set up on all four corners here. And it's really cool because if I'm you know gassing something out and I feel the RPMs raising, I'm feeling it over here in front here, which is really, really cool. If I'm braking, again, I'm feeling that braking pressure happening here. Or if my rear wheels are slipping, I'm feeling it there. So the setup is really straightforward. It didn't take me very long and they have their software here, which is their Haptic Connect. You can use Sim Hub, but this is pretty straightforward. You set your different, um, your levels there on kind of what you want it to do. So for example, if I click into here, RPMs, off track, gear shift, acceleration, all that makes it really, really easy. So this has been hands down one of my favorite things, but is the four corner kit actually necessary? In short, one butt kicker is awesome. Seriously, if I only have one of these on, it's still a good time. Ideally, you'd want to be right underneath you to have the proper effect, uh, but if you have two butt kickers, even better. You can have one be in the front, one in the rear, one on the left, one on the right, uh, etc., and still have a lot of immersion there. But four, four is wild, man. I had no idea what to expect. I set it up for the first time, went out for a drive, and I literally couldn't believe it. It took me a lot of time to adjust the volumes to get them where they were correct because it would go from kind of vibrating to literally shaking my room. Now the trade-off there is that four is expensive. And so if you're never planning on going full motion, like I don't have any plans to ever do that, this is pretty much where you would go and where you would stop and you'd be plenty happy with it. So uh, the Four Corner Kit, I highly recommend it. They make such good products and the feedback's insane. I can't drive without it now. Like I literally, I won't drive my sim without turning these on because it doesn't feel the same. This ruins you. This completely changes the way it feels. Uh, so I couldn't recommend a butt kicker setup enough. So one of the next accessories I added to the setup that made a huge difference was the sound. Now I'm not a huge sound junkie, but I know that I'm also not a fan of wearing headphones. So I wanted something that was better than the TV itself. So I picked up this Vizio unit from Costco here, which is going to be this front sound bar that I have mounted to the prime light. I just use the Vizio brackets there and kind of fab that up a little bit so this angles directly to me from here and then on the rear we have the rear satellite speakers and the subwoofer so I place the subwoofer right here behind the seat and then I have the rear speakers here on their mounts directly connected to uh, the rig itself and so with the volume up with the butt kicker on 
This is nuts, dude. It is absolutely wild. In a full race where cars are driving next to you, I hear the sound coming to my right, to my left. I hear all the sounds coming from the front. So it's a ton of fun and something that will definitely have your ears ringing for hours afterwards. Okay, so this video is probably running a bit long, so we're gonna quickly wrap up the TV and PC here. So this is a TCL 55 inch TV. Uh, I picked this up when I was doing this whole rig itself, uh, and this has been awesome. It's a budget TV, but I like to think of it more as a budget PC monitor because this does 4K 120, 4K 60, but it also does 1080p at like 240. Uh, so really it's going to have a high hertz rate uh, just like a PC is going to have to where it gives me really good frame rates. And so I've been running this again for about four months now. I only have one dead pixel right there in the middle, but I did pick up the warranty with Best Buy. So maybe after a couple of years I can swap this out or whatever I want to do. All right. So the PC is definitely one of those things that can be a speed bump for people that are wanting to get into sim racing, especially if you're wanting to play like modified games or really experience a lot of different cool cars and tracks uh, because there's not a lot of those that are on console. So getting into PC can often be pretty spendy and I totally get that, but there's a lot of pre-built PCs out there that can pretty much play everything that are pretty affordable. So this one right here was a custom build. Jimmy helped me with this uh, and it was made out of a bunch of scrap parts I got from my work. Uh, seriously, it's basically a junkyard build. So uh, it's an MSI motherboard from like 2000 2017 or 18. Um, we have a gigabyte 2070 super graphics card. It's got 64 gigabytes of RAM, not by choice, just because that's what we found. Um, it has a two terabyte SSD, and then it does have a Corsair uh, water cooler on it. And then I think a 650 watt uh, power supply. So nothing crazy. Uh, but it runs everything I need to run. The 2070 Super obviously makes a big difference with a lot of the games I'm playing, uh, but there's crazy pre-built out there that have way better setups for super cheap that you can also check out. So that's it. Pretty simple PC. It just looks kind of fancy. Really simple TV here. And then all of these goodies. Now, a small but helpful accessory in the mix has been this Logitech wireless keyboard here. I got this off of Amazon. It was super cheap, like 20 something bucks, but this has been a massive help because A, it's wireless, which is great, and it also has the built-in keyboard pad, meaning I don't have to have a keyboard here as well, making it super easy to swivel this back and forth, select the things I need. It took a couple days to get used to it, but once I got it, I was good to go. The only thing I wish is that it was backlit illuminated. It doesn't have any of that, um, but it's been an awesome, awesome keyboard. Now, another accessory that's made a pretty big difference in racing has been these gloves. So these are the OMP KS3 gloves. I went through a bunch of research trying to find a good set of sim racing specific gloves. I don't know why I was specifically looking for that, but I wanted something because I wanted to protect my wheel finishes here and I ended up finding these. And so I pulled the trigger, tried them out, and dude, don't even research anything else. Just buy these. These are the best freaking gloves, the best bang for the buck. They look really, really cool. They're comfortable and they slide on easy uh, on and off. So yeah, the OMP KS3 gloves, a lot of cool different colors. I like the lime green here. And then I also have some white ones over there that I'll switch back and forth. So yeah, definitely something every sim racer needs. All right, so I think I've pretty much covered everything. So let's throw on the GoPro and go for a drive. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple different car examples and track examples just to kind of give you some variety of the setup. Uh, not full laps by any means, but just a little bit of each just to kind of show you guys. So we have an Aston Martin here by RSS. We're gonna go ahead and clunk this into gear and then um, over the hood view mode. Uh, don't come after me. This is just to kind of show you guys, but just giving it gas here and even just to idle, the butt kicker unit is rumbling and me braking, I can feel the vibrations underneath the brakes. And then shifting here with the sequential, it kicks me every single time. And it feels, it feels crazy, guys. It's, it's, it's really, really fun. That's quite a bit of immersion. And then uh, wheel slip there from the front tires. And then coming in here, downshift, downshift, feel the wheels grip and pull me through. Yeah, this RSV2 wheel is definitely the right wheel when you're using a sequential or even an H pattern. So give it gas out of here. Right there, so right as I'm coming off of that little kind of crest, all four units are vibrating to signal me that I am sliding. And it feels, uh, 
yeah, it feels pretty crazy. Every curb, so if I hit a curb on the right side, everything kicks me on the right side. Pretty cool. So that's the sequential, uh, and now let's throw something in with the H pattern. All right, so next quick example here, we're in an NSXR on this uh, Pacific Coast Highway map, which is a ton of fun. And kind of what I was saying earlier, sometimes it's fun when it's, it's not a race, it's just like a cruise. So turn on some good music, throw on some tuner cars, and go and just kind of cruise a back road like this. It can be, yeah, it can be fun for hours and hours. So uh, the shifter here, it's a great shifter. It's just from time to time, it can seem pretty loud, especially late at night. Try not to wake people up and whatnot. But um, this RSV two wheel with the butt kicker on, on a back road like this, with the shifter, I'm not saying it feels like the real thing. Hitting a, a post there feels like the real thing. Crashing feels like the real thing. And losing complete control, um, yeah, always fun. Now, some of the people ask me all the time is they go, Anthony, have you gotten pretty good at drifting? you know, with how often you're in that sim. And I always say, no, not really. This is one thing that I have kind of yet to master. I'm trying, but it's just, it's not my, uh, it's not the thing I'm best at, basically. All right, so next up here, we have an example of uh, the GT3 setup. So for this, I swap over to the GSV two-piece steering wheel. Previously, I was using the KS wheel for all GT3 races, but this thing is like the creme de la creme. I absolutely love these shifters. I love the clutches on the back. Um, and again, all of the buttons, all of the on-the-fly changes just feel awesome with this. But uh, GT3 racing, probably my top three, top three, two favorite things to do here in the sim setup uh, mainly because like the butt kicker works so well with gt3 racing i think i feel like the slip of the wheels the best all the bumps all the cracks and i don't know if you guys can hear it but basically whenever i'm starting to lose grip there on the front end i can feel everything vibrating through my feet which is pretty awesome and then again every shift is kicking me as well which is super cool so yeah, I'd probably say GT3 racing, probably one of my top, top two favorite things to do here in the setup. All right, so here we are on Spa and in a Mercedes F1. To be honest, um, F1 driving in the sim, it can be fun. Uh, I think it's a good time, but I prefer GT3 racing for sure. But with that said, when I have friends and family over who are like, yeah, can we drive an F1 car in the setup? I go, absolutely. And then uh, they fill the whole butt kicker setup and all the different curbs and all that at such like a fast pace. You know, they're they're smiling from ear to ear. But uh, I, I think F1 racing is pretty fun. So here on Spa, filling the slide, filling the loss of grip there. And what's crazy is the butt kicker, since the vibrations are so crazy, you'll fill everything up all the way to the freaking keyboard get down to the bone there especially in a car like this oh yeah dude this thing's i'm hoping you guys can hear that it is vibrating like crazy i, I get oh yeah dude no
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this All Day Anthony Sim Racing Special. Whether it was just hanging out with me here in the room or maybe seeing the upgrades or gaining some inspiration for yourself, I really do appreciate all of you watching. And honestly, I have a ton of fun making these sim videos. Uh, I'm kind of passionate about this now. It's just like a side hobby. And when I'm not able to work on my cars, this is something that I enjoy doing. So uh, maybe you guys will get into this someday for yourself. Just remember, it's expensive. Uh, it is addictive and you may end up in a box in an alleyway someday. But besides that, it's awesome. So as always, if you guys love the sim racing content or just love seeing my videos, please, please, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. This is Alden Anthony. Peace. <laughs>